Love him, but I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Ding. <laughs> do, 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 do. What episode is this? Hello, everyone, and welcome back for episode 12 of From the Middle. We are three middle class guys living in the middle of America with the point of view somewhere in the middle and something about the middle chapters of our lives. <laughs> they get it. They get it. You guys get it. You've heard it 12 times now. Yeah. They have all of our names memorized by this point. I'm Dylan. I'm Gerard P. Whitaker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Corey Hubble. And this is From the Middle. Thanks for tuning in, guys. You have, Gerard. You, have, you have a you have a radio announcer voice when you do the I intro. I have heard that. It's called the Horseshoe down by the old Tangy and the Ohio State Buckeyes. They're number one. I know you didn't the, like the Buckeyes reference, but well, no, no, it was fine. It's fine. Yeah. Is so, there... uh, yeah, this is episode twelve. How are you guys feeling? All right, about the same I did for episode eleven. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Like a whole week later and you feel exactly the same. Yeah. Sometimes time doesn't fly. All right. Cool. I feel great. I feel a little silly this evening as well. I did last time too. That's funny. <laughs> what can I say? We just had a surprise visitor. We can mention that. Yeah, uh, that was fun. Greg Dillow of... from episode five was out riding his motorcycle uh, next to our studio and asked, he texted and asked if he could come in, and so we just had a little visit from, from our buddy Greg. So um, I know a lot of you listened to uh, episode five, and uh, it was good to see him again. He's, I, a good, cool he's good people. I'm just blown away how good you are at remembering the episode number. I literally every time am just like, yeah, we did one sometime, I think, where we talked about this. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, in episode five at minute four, 37 <laughs> seconds, we talked about this thing. And I'm just, I'm very impressed. I think it's because I do the social media posts. And so I just remember the pictures so and then like, I, yeah. I remember the hashtags kind of. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. So you're, you're like writing down notes while you're listening. Yeah, and I love I, it. I have to listen to us like three times. Yeah, that's good. I don't listen to this at all. Y'all mm-hmm. out there are lucky. You only have to listen to us. <laughs> exactly. I, well, I hope this turns out good. I don't even listen. So, yeah. I just go online and give us good reviews on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, if we don't start getting some voicemails, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I'm just going to start calling in in random voices, uh, just pretending to be listeners. And these these people are going to hear those recordings inserted into episodes like they've got some real. We could weirdos. turn that into a game once once like actual people start calling in, leaving voice messages. We'll yeah, like mix it in with some of those. Some will be them. Some will be you. Yeah, in different voices, yeah. and then we'll we'll play a game from yeah. the middle called "Is the Dylan or not Dylan?" Yeah, <laughs> to Dylan or not. That sounded better in my yeah. head before yeah. I said it. But yeah, to Dylan. I, or that was not very to assumptive Dylan. language when people start leaving voicemails. Yeah, uh, that was really good. When we hit critical mass is what we're saying. We're, we're now being listened to in Honduras. So yeah, there's countries. <laughs> we that, may have ju- that may have just we been me. We picked up from, an entire nation. Yeah. That may have just been me from two weeks ago when I was there. But Yeah, we've conquered the United States onto the rest of the world. Yep. Uh, we, got, we got dad listening in this country. We're good to go. So And ludicrous. Uh, look, I, he's always in there. It's just assumed he's in our hearts. Do you guys realize that we keep referencing Ludacris as a friend of the show, but we only really talked about that in, in episode zero? Yeah. So no one got the context. The reference episode what, zero was never an episode, what context? by the way. Ludacris is a longtime friend of the okay, show. Okay, that's where it ends. Never mind. I stand corrected. Corey, you're silly. Wink. <laughs> you really are in a silly mood, aren't you? I am. I'm down for a silly goose time, and that's it. <laughs> That's a Chris D'Elia thing. <laughs> uh, what's his most recent thing he's done? Like, what do you mean, uh, has movie? he done a stand up recently? Yeah, he has a, he's in the, the Comedians of the World. Okay. He he was in the, obviously, the USA section. I'm not of that. familiar with that. Oh, it's on Netflix. Um, it's comedy, stand up comedians from all over the world. So they, they chunk it. The seasons, in quotes, are United States, Canada, Mexico, India. Mm. And it's. It's some of the more popular and up and coming comedians in that area. So you just watch through the whole world of stand up comedy and you can see differences in what's funny there. What are people talking about there and hmm. it's different styles. And so he, he had a special on that. He's uh, shooting a movie right now. Army of the Dead. Army of the Darkness. Army of 
something. Um, so he's got a big action movie coming out. I'm a little bit of a fan of Chris D'Elia. Yeah. His brother, Matt D'Elia, just um, has a podcast now called Matt D'Elia is Confused. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, he's one of your favorites. One I of- mean, we've talked about Sebastian Maniscalco a lot. Mm-hmm. He's, uh, uh, Chris D'Elia is up there. He makes me, I don't know. I mean, I'm not puritanical about language. I don't, I don't really care too much. I mean, if it's excessive. You and care enough to use whatever that word was. <laughs> Uh, swear words, Par- parentanical, puritanical, puritanical, puritanical. I don't puritanical. view it from a puritan mindset. Like it has to be puritanical, puritanical, pure, not pure, pure. Putting it together in my head, puritans. It's the first time I've heard that word. Um. So anyway, he swears a lot. It doesn't bother me all that much. If it's super excessive, it's like, come on, man. You don't. Yeah. If you have to swear to be funny to me, you're not funny. It doesn't bother me if you swear a whole lot, but if you have to swear to be funny, you're not funny. Yeah, I, I feel I felt that way for a long time. That's why I've enjoyed things like uh, from Brian Regan, Jim Gaffigan. Yep. Yeah, those guys are genuinely funny. Nate, Even Seinfeld is that way. Nate Bargatze. Yeah, Nate Bargatze. Uh, there's a lot of comedians that like they're genuinely just very funny. They don't need that as a crutch. So I'm a big Crystal Leaf fan. Um, maybe a little bit of a man crush, too. I get it. I can I can admit when a dude is uh, handsome. Yeah, you wouldn't have you. Yeah, I don't think you'd have a chance with him. With I don't the way your hair is going. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that in the last episode. Thank you for low, bringing low. that up. Um, it's getting to the point, guys, where if the lighting is just right behind me, do you know when you look at a dandelion and you can see the center of the dandelion? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if it's if if I'm in just a certain amount of light and it looks like that and I'm like, oh, man, yeah, <laughs> I want to hear from some other dudes right now w- when your hair started getting thin and you started to get that spot in the back. When did you just go? That's it, man. I'm just raise. I'm just going to raise her shape. I hear that's more work. You know, what? I, I so I, I ran into that recently, kind of uh, like it. So I've I, too. I had longer hair coming out of high school. We weren't allowed to have long hair in high school, so I grew it out after immediately. Wait, time out. Where did you go to high school? Pleasant. You weren't allowed to have long hair? No, guys were not allowed to have long hair. Were you Puritans? No, it wasn't a puritanical kind of thing. Okay. I just used the word. See? First. I mean, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really proud of you both. I'm excited. No, I think I think it was allowed to be like... To your shoulder, but not any longer than that. But you're you're like as old as me, so this it, is like it's high school. You said, yeah. So it's ninety public high school, nineties, uh, late late nineties, early two thousand. Graduated in 02. That's a weird arbitrary rule, like to that to just say shoulder length for a guy. Well, what pick. I was getting to is like this is like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, that sort of bowl cut. Like, well, we couldn't have facial hair either at all. So I grew a beard as soon as I and I, I literally have, well, I I shaved once. Uh, for a girlfriend, I was curious as to what I would look like shaved. And then I grew the beard back immediately after that. And that's been the only time since high school that I've not had facial hair. Hmm. Wow. So anyway, I'm sorry, I cut you off. You you were getting to... Yeah, no, so like... And so like I grew the long hair and then when I, I cut the long hair and then I, I kind of had like the... For a long time now, I've been doing like like a hard part with a, kind of like the, the pompadourish comb back as is uh what i've been doing for a while and then that's been getting more and more difficult to like get that (laughs) volume yeah right and then for like a a several weeks ago for i was like i was lying on my stomach in my bed and my four-year-old was like climbing on my back and i took a selfie because that yeah and it was in that selfie where like for like the first time in years I saw the top of my head. <laughs> and I was like, how long has it been like yeah. this? Because I saw scalp like clearly. Yeah. And um I was like, man. And so then I started looking things up. And I'm not I'm not like Bic shaving my head or anything. Right. But like that later that week or shortly after the next time I went to the barber, like it was. I just told him, "I'm like, I'm changing everything, man." And I told him the story. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we went with uh, with like a a three guard buzz down on top with a tight fade. So, 
so I'm I'm interested when people decided to make that dis- for guys that that have decided to just go. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna rock the the bald like the razor. Hey, I razor shave. I hear that's more work between razor shaving it and sunscreen and. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. I've like, razor shaved before. Yeah, a couple of times just I don't, for the, just for the fun of it because I wanted to. But you have a good a good shaped head. I'm concerned that I don't have a good shaped head because if you go razor shave, you got to have a good shaped head. Well, you wear hats until it grows back, and then you're all good. <laughs> like I, I don't. I, that's one thing I've never understood about hair is that like it as as much as like I've enjoyed taking care of my hair, and um, we made fun of you, but the fact is like my wife is probably snickering right now because like she knows my experimentation with different types of hair products. Yeah. And like boutique style. Yeah. products and things that I've that I've tried over the years. And um I but I I still even at that like don't understand why guys some guys are like so scared to try something with their hair. I think because Because like hats are always an option. Right. But like if you have a, a job or something where you're up in front of people and it looks horrible. Eh, that's a good point. You you don't have I've always been in an office or a cubicle or right. something. Right. And so so I'm I'm with you about the picture. So we've talked about my day job before as a graphic facilitator. I stand drawing at a wall with my back to the entire room of executives. And in every board and conference room in America, there seems to be recessed lighting <laughs> spotlights. And at an angle. Yep. And <laughs> everybody wants to document this really interesting offsite brainstorming day. So there's tons of pictures of the back of my head. <laughs> Floating around in deliverables that have been left in client hands around the world. And I'm looking at some because I, I I have to go through all the pictures and see what's going to make a good picture for the book that we leave behind. <laughs> so I have to go through all these photos and just see the back of my dumb head. It's getting so thin. <laughs> so I'm, I'm super... I'm super self-conscious about it. I'm, tr- I'm getting over it slowly. I, I've, I have people in my family that age gracefully they accept hey my body isn't what it used to be my hair isn't what it used to be i'm fine and they age gracefully and they just accept every new phase on the other side of the spectrum i've got some family that does their best to <laughs> it's a fine line between being presentable <laughs> and taking pride in your appearance and being too vain about it and, right right so I've seen both sides of the spectrum and it's like, I don't want to be that vain about it. However, there is sort of a, it's an ego thing. I'll admit it's like a little pride. I'm a little, I can be a little, um, Metro uh, to use a term from 10 years ago. I can, I, I like to look not, I like to wear cool, try to wear cool clothes on a limited budget or dress nice or go to the occasional hipster barber shop and get a really cool tight fade and, have them fade into the beard and like the right. side part and a hard part. And I love all that stuff. The, the hot towel and the shout out to Blake uh, at uh, downtown at the place. <laughs> we love you, Blake Pfeiffer. Um, I'm really struggling to remember. <laughs> the place. Where does Blake work? Downtown. Yeah, I've never been there. Come on, man. Oh, I, go to your, I, I go to your run. I, I know the, the mill. place you're talking about, too, and I can't think of the name. I uh, go to your run of the old mill, familiar? Cheap, old familiar barbershop. Gosh, familiar. gosh dang it, brain that. fart. I love old familiar, but it got to the point with Blake where I was like, "Dude, you just got to tell me. You got to tell me when I get to that point where it's like, hey man, there's no saving this anymore. It's time to let it go.'" And so, guys, guys that have made that choice, uh, was that an emotional? <laughs> uh, did did that take? Was that a little bit of a? Did it take some getting used to? Like, was that a psychological exercise? Uh, is that going to be hard for me? Should I just try it and see how bad it looks? Girlfriend, it's all about the attitude. <laughs> you just got to rock the new identity and be like, I'm a shaved head kind of person now, and I am fierce. Confidence is it, key. That is very true. Okay. I went and got my uh, phone looked at today at the Apple store Yeah, at, at Polaris. There was a dude in the Apple. They can wear whatever they want at the Apple store pretty much. As long as they have the Apple T-shirt on, right? Yeah, it, you wear the Apple shirt. Virtually anything else you want, yeah. just can't have a logo. Tattoos on it. can show. You can roll up your jeans, shorts. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So this dude walks out, Apple employee. He has the the Apple navy blue T-shirt on. He has jeans that are cuffed at his ankle. He has low top chucks on, a l- super long beard, and then his head. So he had this 
horseshoe bald head. The sides of the horseshoe bald head were super curly. The whole top was like reflective, perfect shine. But then in the very front, he had one curl. <laughs> nice. Sick. He is my hero. But he walk. He just he walked super confidently. He he totally owned his look. And it in a weird way, like you forgot <coughs> that you were looking at this like kind of funny looking cartoon woolly willy <laughs> like ha- hair. But he, he he like rocked it. It was awesome. Like it looked good on him. I'm spending way too much time. To- Chris <laughs> D'Elia has beautiful hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is what led to this diatribe. The whole the whole man crush thing started from oh, Chris D'Elia's hair. I'm sweating. Do you have other man crushes, by the way? <laughs> uh, yeah. And does Chris D'Elia know about him? <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. I mean, you can share if you want. That whole thing came from Chris D'Elia's hair. Okay, I'm confident in my masculinity. I can say when a dude is, is attractive, is a good-looking dude. Um, Jason Momoa? Okay, yeah. Come on, man. Aquaman, for all the people that just saw the commercials. You know what's interesting, more interesting uh, to me about him is not just how he looks in his amazing body, but um, I'm joking. But like, he's kind of got this really interesting background um, in his heritage and whatever. So Yeah. Mm. Jason Momoa. Cool. Any other ones? Why is this? Why are you guys tell me some of yours? I don't know. Kendall, you can go. I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't man know. crush? I don't have any man crushes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I would say both of you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. That is so adorable. Oh, you know, I Michael Buble. I mean, he's a, uh, yeah, uh, he's yeah. a schmoozer, okay. right? Like, he, in, in, the, in the sweetest, most endearing way. It's not, yeah. the, it's not the, the, like the, the uh, car salesman type, you know, the sleazy car salesman mm-hmm. type stereotype. It's nothing wrong with selling cars, but there's a stereotype. Yeah. Buble just has this schmoozery. Oh, oh yeah. He's yeah. Got, when we were at his concert, we went to his concert at, it was at Nationwide I, Arena. I've been to several. Yeah, he's, it's great. He would be just working the crowd like the old, yeah. like the Rat Pack used to. And at times it was like cringy, uncomfortable, but he was so good at it. But you're like, oh, yeah. he's just so schmoozy. He's yeah. so like yeah. working the crowd. Also, I mm-hmm. uh, used to have a man crush on Johnny Depp. Not so much anymore. Yeah. But in his, like, he was a little thinner. He would wear, like, lots of accessories and bracelets and, like, bandanas around his arms. He and pulled play it the, off. Play yeah. the piano and smoke a, a cigar and just, yeah. like, yeah, Johnny Depp used mm-hmm. to be. I'd, so say, I'd say you and McGregor, too. Yeah? Yeah. You and I, for me, it was watching the um, uh, Long Way Around, Long Way Down. It's a documentary oh, yeah. with him and his buddy. They take bikes around the world. Great motorcycles. Awesome documentary. Highly recommend it. Uh, I think they're on the free streaming app called Tubi, T-U-B-I. I'm pretty sure they're free streaming there. Awesome documentaries, but he just feels really down to earth. I realize this could be a shtick for the documentary. Uh, he just seems like a really cool laid back guy. Yeah. Uh, and then I loved watching his interpretation of Obi-Wan and the Star Wars prequels yeah. was awesome. So, uh, yeah. This I may could. be just me, but I, I want to throw in Dwayne The Rock Johnson. No, I. That's lots of people. I'm, I'm sure would relate. I'm all about Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Hobbs and Shaw looks good. Hobbs and Shaw, the Fast and Furious. Yeah, is that like the twelfth one of those? Or I think we're on fourteen. Yeah, fourteen. Is it? I actually said that as a joke. Are so we, yeah. So did what we do you guys? Digit? Oh, okay. <laughs> I I believe. What, what do you guys? What do you guys think of the fact that the Rock is in like every action movie? He's actually. It doesn't matter what you. Think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that oh, was a, that was a setup. We fell for it. That Sorry a... if you were listening on headphones or, or car speaker. <laughs> I'll see how I can edit that to not make Add it sound cringy volume. later. Anyway, any other man crushes? That went. That got interesting. How we got on that? I just look. If we can talk about hair for ten minutes because of Chris D'Elia, I think we can just throw out a few other names and give some shout outs to mm. some cool dudes. We're doing it so that we can hashtag this on Instagram. Oh, for sure. This oh. is this is a marketing ploy for 100%. sure. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. More people we can tag, the better. He's already shared some of my posts. <laughs> what was that, Corey? Did Nothing. you want to elaborate nope. on nope. the thing you just said under your breath so mm-hmm. we could all hear it? Nope. He sh- he shared a Crystalia. Oh, what's that? Crystalia uh-huh. shared well, some of your posts. Oh. Yeah. You know what? Now that you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> he He did. Oh, uh, I would love to hear about that. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I did some fan art. It's not quite a caricature, like a theme park caricature, but I did some fan art. I listened to his podcast, much to Sherry's chagrin, my wife. And um, he liked it, and he shared it. Yeah. Nice. That also happened, actually. Uh, it was cool. The Italian, An Italian model did that as well, <laughs> correct? Yes. I also drew an <laughs> Italian model. <laughs> <laughs> who shared it, and then a bunch of uh, Italians started following your Facebook page, right? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. He just, he's, he's one of those, like, hipster models where he's got, like, white, just what we were talking about, like, the hard part and yeah, the, yeah. the buffon, but then, like, a perfect, like, white beard, and he's got all these tattoos. So he's just an interesting-looking, like, cool-looking dude. So It's he's, an like, Italian version of the world's most interesting man as a model. Yeah. Sure. I yeah. think is. uh uh, Alessandro Manfredini or Alejandro Manfredini or something. And um, there was just a cool photo of him that I found on Google. And so I was just, I'd make a cool sketch. And so I just sketched him and then shared the time-lapse video of it. And he shared it. And then, yeah, like the next day I had like yeah. my Hubble Arts page on Facebook had like a ton of new Italian fans. And I was yeah. like, what happened? And then I saw that he had shared it. It was funny. So if he's listening, uh, ciao, come va? There you go. There you go. Mm. So what other models have you drawn? <laughs> what other male models have you drawn? Yeah. Chris D'Elia, yeah. the other guy. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> uh, so is the old, you said old fashioned, is the barber? Old familiar barbershop. Old familiar. I'm so sorry, guys. I've been there so many times. I can't remember. I, I can't believe I blanked on your name for a second. I, I was curious. I wanted to ask, but I, it was, I didn't want to interrupt. Is that one of the places? It feels really popular now. This kind of old school barber feel. Throwback. Go in. There's whiskey or bourbon or whatever kind of things you like to drink in there, and it's a whole kind of thing now. For these, yeah. I don't want to call them hipstery barber shops, but yeah, that, uh, that's, that's what they the are. Wrong, that, yeah, yeah, I don't. Whatever. I, I, I mean, we had Jeremy Kester on the show. Yep. He sent me a picture one day of him at a barber shop. There's like a fireplace and leather chairs and someplace probably like that. Yep, that might have even been that. Yeah, because actually, I think I sent that to Sherry and said, hey, this might be a cool thing for Corey sometime. And so maybe it was that. But that's a thing now. So I don't, is it, it's that kind of shop? Very much. It's, it's, it's a throwback to, you know, days of yesteryear where it's kind of the leather clawfoot chairs and they have a deer, a mounted deer head on the wall with like a fez and a pipe in its mouth. And like, <laughs> of course they do. Yeah. Just like this cool sort of vibe. It was started by um, some really cool guys down in downtown Columbus. And um, our buddy from little old Ada just started working there. And so um, I would go down to see him not all the time, but for special occasions like your wedding and um, stuff like that, where I, I wanted sort of that sort of cool, super clean. He does a really nice fade. I mean, like a really nice fade. So I want to, you can, you can see what's prioritized when you went to that place for your haircut for my wedding. And I went to great clips the day before. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I said like went in and said, Hey, my wedding's tomorrow. If you just feel free to take your time and I'll tip you extra. It was like a normal day. Uh, Honestly, that's one of the saddest parts about my hair getting thin is that I don't get to go down. I'm not going to be able to go down there as much because it's like, come on, guy, what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you shave it off completely, then you don't have as much of it. But the, there, hey, there are still guys who go to the barbershop to get their heads shaved. Or if you have, if you grow your beard out and then you can yeah. get get, uh, get that touched So I'm at the point where I think I've got enough up <clears throat> front. <laughs> That it makes sense to keep it a little longer. Yeah, like that guy from the <laughs> Apple store. I guess. <laughs> the one curl like a baby doll. I just had this very surreal moment where I'm like, we're recording a podcast. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. And you're talking about how to solve <laughs> the front of your hair. Hey, uh, much more famous podcast. Let's have post focused. a picture of, of that oh, head. Oh, man. Nope. And we'll have the, we'll have the yeah. middlers. Give my, suggestions. My spirit flew out of my body and <laughs> saw that one from above the room on that one. It was great. <laughs> what it's so good. Like? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was some shine. He's near a lamp. <laughs> Do you know you have a lot of gray hair and a bald hair? <laughs> Thanks That's for funny. that. Hey, hey, well, so let me finish that. There are much more famous podcasts that talk about much smaller topics. Yeah. 
<laughs> I didn't say it was bad. It was just just funny. I was surprised and amused. Hey, you're going to get a little bit of everything when you listen to From the Middle. Yeah. Sometimes we're going to change your life by discussing creative process and help your business and help your marketing and help your storytelling. And sometimes sometimes we're going to have a bad hair day and whine about it. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes we're going to be sad about aging. Yeah. And sometimes we're going to talk about trivial stuff that doesn't matter. So, I mean, welcome. I I had to just make sure. See, that's that's that that's that bald headed attitude I was talking about <laughs> earlier. You are embracing you, it more you than are you are fierce. Yeah, you shave that off. You don't need that hair, Samson. Yeah. <laughs> Last week I was complaining about uh, being annoyed. I had to water plants. So look, <laughs> if we've set a low sta- low bar on what we talk about here on from the middle, holy crap, guys! It's been twenty five minutes. <laughs> We're still. Are we still on the what's new with you portion? <laughs> We're just <laughs> rambling on. Aren't Sorry we? about that. <laughs> and you thought we'd have nothing to talk about for this one. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Did you mention what's going on with you? Uh, look, I, the only thing going on with me at this point, other than all the m- much more important things that I do, like you know, sleeping and working and being a dad <laughs> and a husband. Is that I'm crazy excited for football. I think that's kind of where we are. Like we're getting close. Yeah, we're not quite there yet, but it's a couple so, weeks away. So it's right there. So so close. And I this is that time of the year where there's so little news to talk about that I just start having these fun mental excursions about. Uh, I, man, it would be so cool if we played a. If I, I'm an Ohio State fan, we've talked about it before. I right? alumni and fan. Like, oh, I'd love to schedule a home and home series where we would play, you know, I want to play Texas and I want to play just or what programs I don't like or, you know, I just that that for me is this is the fun, imaginative. We don't have a roster yet. We don't have, you know, our, our schedule is probably mostly firmed up, but it's like I'm just I'm ready to watch some football. So, yeah, that's that's where I am. I'm I'm very excited. There's uh, there's not much like. You know, coming downstairs on a Saturday morning, turning on college game day when you can open the doors of your house and just have the screen doors and just let breeze flow in and make a whole day of just sitting down and watching some college football. It is a good time. It's the whole it's all of it. It's the the drinks that come along with fall and there's pumpkin spice lattes for everyone. (laughs) And there's there's grilled burgers and there's it's cooler outside. You got a hoodie on and Sherry has started a fun ritual where she'll put um, some soups, some soups in the slow cooker and just have that and bread all day. So there's just soup, soup and football Saturdays. You were sold at bread, weren't you? Yeah, man. nice. And I'm, I'm excited, too, man. That's yeah. what uh, that's what I think is cool about fall is that you've got you mentioned grilling like you've got you've got an excuse to do anything you want food wise right yeah you can do the hot chocolate because it's new and awesome for the season yeah you can also grill burgers yeah yeah and it's I love it fall is a special time well let's not get to fall too quickly because this will come out <coughs> no on I mean this August is August 7th, right but you know so you know it's, it's summer's winding down yeah we're yeah, once you start talking fairs yeah. and back to school, and exactly. It, August means back to school. Back to school means football. Football means fall. <sighs> I'm one happy. Fall man. means Christmas. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry <laughs> Christmas and Chappy Chuckanucka. Yeah. So when does the uh, Mariah Carey Christmas Pandora radio station start? Mm, and when does she botch a New Year's Eve concert? <laughs> Oh we're gonna, boy, that was something, huh? We're gonna have so much to talk about. That I was can't like wait. two years ago. I know, but yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so that was fun. That yeah. reference. I loved watching that. that. That was a train wreck and a half. She yeah. the girl can sing, but I don't know what happened. It was cool. She gets a pass, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how that works. So without getting into like players and rosters, like what can we expect yeah. for this uh, upcoming few weeks out still upcoming uh, college football season? I, I, you know, I, there's plenty of talking heads and articles you can read on, on some of the specifics. Like, I, you know, we don't, we don't need to rehash what everyone's talking about. Like I said, for me, some of the hypotheticals, you know, (coughs) when you're talking Ohio state football, it's, you know, it's really big 10 championship or bust, you know, beat Michigan or bust. And for you, Kendall, it's the inverse. Uh, it's just try not to not get embarrassed for the season and try to not get embarrassed by Ohio State. <laughs> no, but realistically, it's programs been recently. Yeah, seriously though, I mean programs like Ohio State and Michigan. It's win the big, beat your rival, then win the Big Ten and try to get in the playoff. Now, 
Right. And uh, I just, I, I love that. I love that, like, you you can't wait to play your biggest rivals, but you don't want the season to go too fast. Exactly. Uh, and I don't I don't want to rush it. I know sometimes people get antsy with the boring non-conference games. I really love every minute of it. Mm. Um, there's almost any college football game I can watch, and it'll keep my attention. But man, I just I, I I'm I'm I, I'm with you. Like at I watch the the early non-conference stuff. But I mean, I just the whole time I'm watching it, I just can't help but just think and lament to myself. Like, I wish this was better. This was different. Yeah, I don't feel because it just it doesn't have does not have the same feel as when like your conference season starts. No, and well, yeah, it's just not it's I, not the same. Like, it, I don't think those are mutually the thing. exclusive. Those, those games matter. Yeah, but um, I mean, they're not like. Be, those games matter because I mean you only have a dozen games and you drop one or two and and your season's done. Right. Like they, if, they if you're in that Michigan respect. and Ohio State, Alabama, if you're one of those programs, right? Yeah. No, I, they're not mutually exclusive. It's not one or the other. The non-conference is certainly not as exciting as conference play. Conference play is not as good as your rivals, and you know f- it goes from there. But. I it it doesn't matter to me though. I don't care if we win forty two to zero. I'll love every minute of beating some school that's, you know, we just scheduled as our easy game or what. I don't care. I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it. Uh, knowing that it's such a short season, mm-hmm. I just try to enjoy it. And and maybe that's because for a very long period of my working career so far, uh, maybe it's because I couldn't watch a lot of the games. And now that I can. Uh, now that I can watch them, I just love every minute of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. So is there, is there any, as a Michigan fan, is there any teams that you would love to play that you don't normally regularly play? I mean, Notre Dame's kind of in your wheelhouse. Uh, Ohio state obviously is a big rival, but are there any, any schools anywhere that if you could just schedule three, four games with them over, over a couple of years that, that, that you would love to, to play? I mean, are there any programs you just would love Michigan to get a pair? A yeah. Pair? Well, so the, the Notre Dame thing, um, for a couple of reasons has been huge for Michigan. Like it growing up, it was always like Michigan, Notre Dame was always one of the non-conference games. Yeah. Always. Every every year that rivalry happened. And then when, when Notre Dame <clears throat> made their deal where they joined the ACC, uh, like in, in every sport except football. Yeah. But part of that plan was they had to, some of their games, they had to like five. put in more. Five games had to be ACC. Five games had to be ACC. And so then that meant that they had to drop other teams That's, yeah and michigan was on that slate of teams that got that got dropped and and then i mean that was that was like that was huge and i mean nobody in the world of michigan wanted that even though like for for a lot of folks including myself that notre dame game was the big game of the season yeah and i mean and, and i mean that like it is I, I always tell people like i i I root against Ohio State across the board, um, with the exception of when and if they play Notre Dame. Yeah, and then I root like I root for Ohio State over Notre Dame. Uh, so that's so so like my my hi- hierarchy there is is that which is not which is not all that uncommon. No. By the way, for 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 Michigan fans, especially if in the state of Michigan, um, I mean, there's don't don't get me wrong, Ohio State is still the big game um and the bulk of the fans are there but it there's also i mean there's a huge swath of fans that during the notre dame days um notre dame was the biggest game and ohio state took second place Hmm. and then for an even larger population of people the michigan state game took center stage and i would also say that in the state of michigan if you're just generally speaking sort of like in central michigan that michigan michigan state game is the biggest game of the year for the state yeah i can see that um 
Yeah, we don't have anything like that in Ohio. And so, yeah, Cincinnati. And so I'm, not, I'm not saying that to be cheeky because I say that to some people. They're like, "Oh, you're just saying that because of blah 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 blah." I was also saying that in the '90s when Ohio State couldn't buy a win. Yeah, um, that that was that was that was just the case. Yeah. So, so that's how huge it was for me. It would be as if as as if Michigan and Ohio State got canceled and said, "We're not playing that game anymore." Yeah, I, I, and we're in this weird era now where conference almost just used to be like, it's the conference you happen to play in and there's some of your rivals in there. And now we're in this thing where conference is nearly as big of a deal as your favorite team. Right. Where people, it's, you know, you go to an SEC and it, you're chanting SEC and, uh, you know, it's this weird. Um, I and, and so I, I've picked up a little bit of that in that, you know, if, I'm always going to root against Michigan, but right. if Michigan's playing somebody that I like Notre Dame or like Florida in a bowl game, I, I want the big 10 to get another win. Sure. Like there's something about your conference, not looking bad that that's important to you. That is true. I think most people are dishonest about that. You think that they want to root for the I, conference. I think, I think most people think that it's noble to say, I'm going to root for the conference. And, the, so, and when the reality is like, I mean, it, I'll I'll say I'll I'll put it this way: like, there's I've got a silver lining either way if Ohio State wins or loses in a bowl game. That's not again, like yeah. So so that said, like I can recognize that, but I'm not going to lie to you and say I'm rooting for Ohio State in their bowl game. Yeah, I and and maybe not. Like, maybe we're saying the same thing, but it's yeah. like I don't I don't want Michigan to beat a Florida in a bowl game because I want Michigan to win. Right. If the Big Ten looks better, that's going to help us look better. Right. But if and I had if to, Michigan it, happens to be the one to win that one and makes the conference look better I, and makes us look better. If fine. I had if I had to choose between between the margin that the Big Ten would get if Ohio State wins their game, which doesn't usually happen in bowls, <laughs> or do do would I rather have that? Or would I rather see Clemson bury them by 35 points? I would rather see Clemson bury them by 35 points. Okay. I mean, yeah, there's there's no there's no right or wrong answer. It's just going to be somebody's preference. I right. want to see my rival get buried. I want the conference to look good because it could help my team. Right. Um, yeah, it, and that's fine. I I don't. I some people will argue one is right or wrong. I don't I don't feel that way. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, we have the luxury of being fans of teams that at the end of the day, if we went out, there's no debate if we'll be in the playoffs. That's a good point. We have that luxury. Yeah. And if you're outside of eight to 15, eight to 20 teams in the country at best, you don't have that luxury. Sure. Uh, So we get to say that it doesn't really matter if our conference looks good because if the whole big 10 is a, dumpster fire yeah and ohio state wins out we are in the playoff that that is that is a that's an accurate point that i haven't really thought about because same for michigan yeah Yeah. if if minnesota goes undefeated they also end up in the playoff but only because they came out of the big 10 and actually not even guaranteed if you remember when iowa was undefeated before the big 10 championship they were in a few years ago there was legitimate debate on whether they they should even be in it because It wasn't that the and the Big Ten that year, if I remember, wasn't bad, but it was right. just average. Uh, but there was real question: if they win this, are they even still in? Right. Uh, and so we have that luxury, which a lot of most teams don't. So we're in a good position. If we lose more than two games, we had a bad season. If we went out, we're always going to be in because our fan bases will travel. They want us in games. That means more money for the bowl. They don't want an Ohio State or Michigan or Alabama. There's other schools around the country. We're just talking about the Big Ten. There's schools you don't want to miss out on their fan base paying to go to that bowl game. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's a bit of, I mean, legit, but that's that's a bit of conspiracy theory right there, right? It's not, you're not having anybody coming out and saying this is why we're doing that. No, it's just kind of assumed because it it ties to TV ratings as well. Traditionally, Ohio State TV ratings, tons of eyeballs are going to watch Ohio State because they love them or hate them. So you think the committee is being told by the networks? No, 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 no. I don't mean the committee. I just mean any bowl is going to, any bowl... Uh, set up oh sure yeah is gonna love to have us yes in their bowl no, game that that is right and if we're close if we have the best record possible or a record that could get us into their bowl game they want us in if it. you win six games you're in yeah oh yeah yeah there's no there's no question so 
Yeah, that's all I'm saying. But yeah, I, you know, we get that luxury. And so it's it's nice to with, uh, you know, high expectations also comes, uh, you know, sometimes rabid fan base. But, you know, win as many as you can beat your rival it really. And for us, both OSU and Michigan, even one loss, you're probably still in the playoff. Right. Uh, as long as it's not probably the last game that you played. Yeah. Uh, lose early. If you're going to lose, lose early. You win you only lose one you're probably in it's a great place to be in you know we yeah yeah no that's that's true do you want to talk about playoff like would you rather see a more traditional playoff we'll be at 18 i don't know if that's what you're asking it will be an 18 playoff yeah i it, this this is a mark my words moment it it will it's inevitable i hope so like, yeah i'm, I, I'm in i don't camp. see any i don't see any way of doing it you could make a 16 more that that feels stupid the only reason they're saying they can't do it is because of scheduling but all the other divisions of college football test exactly so literally it's, literally it's a, every it's sport it's a dumb every argument level. Yeah. make it eight teams there's ways to work out logistics. It will be eight teams. I think it's a matter of you can still name sponsors, use bowl games to do it. That yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, that's fine. You know, it, I I think the the younger somebody is, the less they care about the prestige and history of things like the Rose Bowl or whatever. True. Uh, they would rather see a playoff over just keeping a bowl sacred. Uh, so I, it's inevitable in my opinion. I I I can't imagine in any more than. I'm going to just pick what feels right. Six to nine years. It, it can't take any more than that to go to eight teams. Uh, it's a couple more games. It's not a big deal. So we'll get there. Uh, I think in eight, and I'm fine with eight because frankly, when you start getting to eight, nine, 10, you're talking two and three lost teams. Uh, it's not. Uh, yeah. In, I, I want it to at least be up to a point where like, Boise State can go undefeated and have a shot at it. Yeah, my opinion on that. Th- those teams at least need need to. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. They need there's, a shot. There's power conferences as we've agreed upon: ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12, Big Twelve. I think the winner of those five conferences is guaranteed one of the eight slots, unless go. the winner has probably more than two losses, in which case you should now be an at-large. I think those five slots are guaranteed, and then you take the next best three teams after that. Yeah, uh, and it's a. I think the part the committee gets it right is the eye test argument. So right. if you take your five conference championships with no more than two losses, in my opinion, there's mm-hmm. five of your eight, the next best looking three teams. And if that's a twelve and zero Boise State, great, throw them in at the last seed. I don't care. Yeah, uh, I, I, that's how I would do it. No, that's. I, I think that that's that's the the same kind of plan that I've been all about is you, you yeah. have automatic bids for winning your conference. Yeah. The power five and, and then, then open up three slots. And and I would, I would stipulate conferences most like I would stipulate you have the con you, you have the game. So yeah, you, you have to have the, the conference championship game. Yeah. And I, and then, and then uh, the, the playoff spot is on the line there. And, uh, and just because I hate Notre Dame, I would make Notre Dame play a conference schedule. Yeah, I I was in the all or nothing There's, boat before the Big Twelve had their conference championship. So I thought you can't have a conference, a major power conference that doesn't have a bowl game. So right. either all of them have it or none of them have it, and you factor that in as part of the, yeah. the slate. So that's what I, it. that's what yeah that's what I would do. Eight teams, uh, and I think the like you know sometimes you get that like. Clemson is one loss in one division of the ACC, and then a, a three loss team comes in and maybe beats them. You can't put that team in if they sweep. I, I just can't. You had you had a lot of chances to not lose three games. That's sports. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that. I think but, you need to punish. I think you need to punish somebody for losing too many times because odds are, if they lost three times, at least one of them was probably ugly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think you just need some kind of stipulation like. If you if you win your conference with three losses, you lose your automatic bid, but you can still be picked at large if they think you're a hot team. Sure. But I think you should forfeit your automatic. You you can't lose that many times and get in automatically, in my opinion. But that's semantics that people way smarter than us could work out. Mm -hmm. I just think, yeah, eight teams make sense. Do some automatic berths, put some basic rules to keep crap teams from getting in. And I think you've you've got a pretty basic system. So, uh. Yeah, that's that's I, I like that's exactly what I'm talking about. I like those kind of theoretical discussions. Yeah. You know, it's it's you know, where I'm just sitting on my chair, you know, with my my soda, you know, f- solving the world's problems. But 
uh, I that to me is fun. Like what what bowl combinations would you like to throw together? If we were going to add some more teams to the Big Ten, who would it be? If you're going to mm-hmm. make a playoff system, what would it look like? That stuff to me is fun to to discuss. And if you are listening and you have a better idea, uh, comment on our social media and tell us, and we'll debate it. Yeah. But uh, I think we just solved the playoff. So we did just solve the playoff. Corey, do you have any questions about football? <laughs> It's the, it's the one with the non perfectly round one. Go you know. sports ball. <laughs> Defeat the opponent soundly. Score a goal. You know, I unit. I'm glad you made those jokes, but I actually appreciate that you don't try to pretend like you're the biggest football fan. No. When you like football, I love You, you know plenty about football. I love watching the games. I like um seeing different strategies played out on the field. I just don't know how to participate in what just occurred. Like the theoretical psych, uh, the inner working. I, I agree about the bowl system in the playoff. I do think I'm tired of these <laughs> no name company sponsored. This is the whatever bowl brought to you by summer's Eve. Well, that, that would still happen. <laughs> yeah, it still would, but it's like we're having bowls just to have bowls and, well, yeah, we're having bowls because the sponsor had enough money to say, right. hey, we're doing one now. Right. Yeah, I would change that if I could, but there's there's some things that you just can't fix because it's just based on money. Politics is like that a lot right. of times. I mean, the university presidents are the ones who are making these decisions. 2% so. of you got the Summer's Eve Bowl reference. That's a Saturday Night Live skit. Um, <laughs> it's a feminine product. Uh, That's like, <laughs> of course it is. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. That's um <laughs> I just made Kendall uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but no, I, I do love Ohio State football. I love college football and, and the Big Ten. I love watching games on TV, and I really love watching games live. But just sort of the, all the all the armchair talking head, like, will this player? I just, I, I, I'm not informed enough to, to be yeah. articulate. Well, to mm-hmm. be fair, I don't enjoy most of the pregame discussion because, like, what we're talking about is fun because it's theoretical. Um, it's not... The, a lot of the pregame stuff to me, frankly, is just boring. It, it really, it all boils down to, it's like the John Madden commentary, like, you know, here's a team that if they score more points, they're going to win today. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's all it is. It's every pregame discussion is if key players play well, <laughs> then this team is going to perform well. If key players don't perform well, this team won't do well. And that's all. I, I don't tune in for the that kind of pregame stuff. Um, if they have some fun special guests on and they're chatting about, you know, they're interviewing an NFL coach who's sitting in to help commentate and talking Mm -hmm. about that kind of stuff's interesting. Sure. But really at the end of the day, if a team shows up and the other one doesn't, that's going to be pretty easy. If they both show up or neither shows up, it's going to be a sloppier game. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that kind of stuff is not interesting to me. Um, cause they're just stating the obvious play well, do well, don't play well, you won't do well. Yeah, uh, this kind of stuff is more fun or chatting about like, you know, if somebody's a if somebody's a UCLA fan, they are like, oh, man, I'd love to see a home and home series with te- uh, TCU. I think that'd be great. Gary Patterson's a great coach. I think it'd be cool to watch UCLA and TCU play because they're kind of lesser known teams in their conferences. Yeah. And, you know, oh, a neutral site game in this, you know, Colorado. Yeah, that kind of stuff is just yeah. kind of fun. It's like it's, turning turning something that you otherwise love into a God game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, you get to sandbox it a little bit and go in and play around and do whatever you'd want. So, right. uh, yeah, I, that kind of that kind of discussion. <laughs> you fight you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who would win in a fight between North Carolina's basketball squad <laughs> is going to play football? Are they against against Michigan Tech's hockey team? I don't think they can. There's something about NCAA sanctions or something. I'm pretty sure they're not allowed. Oh, okay. That reminds me of a game that my nephews uh, told me about. It's a really fun ca- card game called Super Fight, where um, you get to choose characters, and then you get a random variable card. that, And then it's just a whole discussion on convincing everyone else around the table who would win in a fight between... <laughs> <laughs> but like it's it. something crazy like so you get to pick the hulk but then your random card says but with the bottom half of an octopus <laughs> and then the other right so part of it, like is, it part of it is chosen and part of it is random and you just have to convince everyone else right it's really really fun it's called super fight game nice. or super fight 
You should, you should check it out. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. It's just a fun, that's like, that's what geeks do all the time, right? Superman and Batman and who would win in a fight between Darth Vader and, you know, all that stuff. It's just that in a version of a card game. Yeah. And by the way, the stuff that we're talking about is still geeky just because sports are more socially acceptable. Right doesn't mean it's any less geeky fanny fantasy football when applied to any other medium is super geeky but because it's about the nfl somehow it's not weird but yeah it's fine i'm not knocking it i've played fantasy football i'm just saying th- what we're doing is very nerdy this is not far uh, removed uh, uh, from it's geeky there's a difference uh, whatever you can <laughs> you can you can hammer out the semantics. It can be nerdy too yeah, you can hammer out the semantics and the hashtags say, that you use on social media. You can't tell me for a second that 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 baseball is not nerdy. Oh, it is for sure. Yeah, I mean, talk about people who love their statistics. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Goodness. Yeah, this is all nerdy, geeky, whatever talk for sure. Yeah. Do you uh, do, do you do fantasy football, Kendall? No, because I I for the same reason that I don't have a video game console anymore, it would just suck up my time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like no other, and so I just don't do it. Addictive, too addictive. Yep. Yeah, I didn't find it addictive at all when I played. It was fine. I, I actually, uh, I would frequently forget to set my lineup, and then I'd have somebody playing in quotes that was bench that week or something. And I just, yeah. <laughs> Sherry tried it one year, which tells you where we stand in as, as it relates to sports interest. Sherry's m- more probably a sports fan uh, than me. Not probably. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, she's like, thank you, Kendall. But she tried fantasy football one year in like a family pool or whatever, and like every one of her picks was injured in the first two weeks of oh, the season. Man. Yeah, and so that was her first taste of of fantasy football. But I could see where it would get addicting, and it would make you more interested in the games that you wouldn't otherwise be interested in watching to yeah. see how your player does. And so I kind of get it. It makes it it's just an enhanced version. It makes it more immersive to one of our. Mm-hmm. It yeah. makes it more of an immersive experience, other than just I don't care about the Seahawks, for example, but. I do yeah. now because I'm watching this player. Uh, and not only is it watching all the games, but like if you want to do it well, if you want to play fantasy football competitively at all, you need to be doing research. Yeah. And so it's like if, if you ever have or have talked to, to somebody ab- about football and you're just astounded by the fact that they, they know all the players for every team. And they know their situations. And it's like, how do you commit all of that? I mean, there are 32 teams, and you yeah. know everybody on yeah. each of the... Like, it's because they play fantasy football. Sure. Yeah. Like, that's... So, and for some people, it's just flat out... I mean, it's fun to memorize difficult songs, right? So that you can sing, you know... Uh, uh, what's the song I'm thinking of? Like on Rock Band or... No. Guitar Hero? No. I mean, it just... Uh, I mean... Chicken, the China, the Chinese yeah, chicken. You have a dumb stick in your brain, start ticking. Exactly. Watching X Files with the lights on. No, oh. nobody just listens to that song casually and then learns all of the lyrics to it. They had to sit there and study it because they thought it'd be fun to be able to sing yeah. it to themselves. I got stressed just hearing you sing that portion. Yeah. Yeah. So, therefore, yeah. like, I, I think it's perfectly legitimate and okay to, like, say, I want to research football to the point that, like, I can rattle this stuff off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for me, fantasy football is just. I enjoy watching NFL. I love watching college. Yeah. And there's something about some of the behind the, I I'm not going to get into the behind the scenes stuff thoughts. It's too much, but there's I just enjoy college a lot more. And so I think if I, I if I liked NFL more, I'd probably enjoy fantasy more, but it's I care way 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 more about college football than I do NFL. Mm-hmm. So and I, I, that's probably it, why for me it's pretty simple I'm just not a huge nfl fan so it's been one week <laughs> sorry yeah it's been i don't know who like sings it. that bare naked, bare naked ladies oh yeah i really like it's all been done that was like one of <laughs> one of my favorite songs of the 90s yeah you know that whole song by heart uh, yeah, probably still. It's one of those. If I if it was on, I would know every lyric. I couldn't just rattle them off now. If it was on, I'd sing all the lyrics along with it. Uh, I remember mom asking me walking into my room, and I was listening to that song. And she said, Who is this? And I said, Bare Naked Ladies. And it was like, What? Like oh, it's yeah. all it's all guys in the group. It's yeah. not. Yeah, it's just a yeah, weird. They, name. they were close to. Yeah, it's just a weird weird name for a group. <laughs> Nothing else. So, uh, anyways, so. Who's your favorite Disney princess? <laughs> I, is this? 
is uh, this Jasmine. a running joke <laughs> that I'm not aware of? I don't know what you're talking about right now. Okay. No. I mean, it's clearly Mulan. I just didn't know why. Did you know they're, re- they're doing a live action version of that? Yeah. Uh, not doing the, the l- lyrics of the music in the movie. And they're also not going to have the Mushu, the dragon, and the cricket right. in it. I think this is really an appeal to the Chinese wallet. And I, I don't mean that to sound mean. I think China is a huge movie market that Disney's trying to ingratiate themselves into. And by doing a movie that kind of glorifies Chinese history in a way that's probably more accurate and less cartoony, mm-hmm. I think they feel like they can probably get a lot of revenue on a film like that. So they're taking the music, uh, removing the lyrics, making them an instrumental score, and using that as the kind of sweeping background to the Which is film. unfortunate, because how many times did we turn up our speakers as loud as we could as kids and sing... Let's get down to business. Yeah, man out of you from Two Mulan. Defeat. Yeah, no, I, yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm sure I'm going to want to see it. If it's an epic, cool kind of battle movie, I'm sure I'm going to want to see it. I was disappointed to hear of all the remakes, this would have been one of the ones I was more excited to see. Yeah. Uh, from Disney. And I'm, you know, it, I'll just, I'll watch it on Disney Plus whenever it gets added to that streaming platform. I, I, I probably won't see it how in the do, theaters. How do we feel about all the live action shot for shot remakes? Uh, it's one of those things that, like, nobody was asking for. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. When did you ever hear anyone go, they need to remake every cartoon movie? in live action form. Literally no one asked for it. I think it doesn't mean they're bad. It just, no one was asking. Has, has like, has Hollywood reached a point where they've done everything? That's all. Or are there just no thinkers who are like, there's only six plots, man. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. I, I, I I, I mean, like there's nothing, I mean, maybe it's always been this way, but uh, it just, so I was, I actually, when, uh, when I went to go see Godzilla, before we recorded that episode, I took note because it was notable. I'm trying to find it on my phone here. Um, of the there it is. Of the so this is the the four uh, uh, trailers trailers before Godzilla. They were there was a Terminator movie. Yeah. There was a Rambo movie. Yep. There is a Fast and Furious movie, mm-hmm. and it, Chapter Two. Okay. Nothing in that mm-hmm. is original thought. Like it, it, all of, there were rehashing famous brands, and that that was one hundred percent of the trailers that I saw for that. And and it was it was just it struck me. It's like there is there is nothing new here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has it always been that way, or is it just like? Well, no, my I. I this is a really much longer topic that I'd actually enjoy like discussing more at length. I I don't know sure. how much time we have, but my my quick thought to that is Yeah, 15 seconds. Yeah, my quick thought to that is h- however many decades ago you had a handful of studios releasing films at a incredibly slower rate than they are now. Okay. And now you have 20 streaming platforms racing for original content or remakes or the rights to things or whatever. You've got a bunch of movie studios. Disney's releasing six films a year instead of one every five years. Yeah, It's just, and it's not that they can't tell original stories. I just think a lot of the original stories, there's a ton of probably very good independent films getting buried. Right. And the easiest ones for people to go see are the, big blockbusters and remakes. And I don't think that there's, I don't think that, that that there's not original content out there. I think it's just buried because these popcorn movies are so attractive. I don't think it's just popcorn. I I agree with you, but I don't think it's just that. I think there's an added piece of, I want to show my children licenses that I grew up on. So Ninja Turtles, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, animated series came out when I was a kid. It's no accident that that show comes back out when I would be having kids. Sure. The same happened with Strawberry Shortcake for little girls. My aunt and my mom, and then they grew up on Strawberry Shortcake, and then when they had little girls, wow, look at that, Strawberry Shortcake is coming out again. Mm -hmm. So there's a piece of it that is a generational, like I get joy introducing my 
kids to the same brands, even if I don't like the remakes or even if. So I think part of Disney is smart and going the, the 90s kids, us, are going to want to show their kids a version of this yeah. classic story. Right. So sure. there's that. That's part of it. Also, um, merchandising. Yeah. I mean, Lucas made most of his money on merchandising, not sure. not the movies themselves. And yeah. if I grew up with the toys of something that I passed down to my kids, they're no doubt going to be curious about what are these toys of Luke Skywalker? Who is he? What is that story in Saga about? It's all going to be cyclical and come back ar- around. So, yes, you're right. I just think there's an added layer of like... Yeah, I think they're tapping into the power of nostalgia. We also... The, when did when did televisions really start hitting home uh, homes the 50s mm-hmm. and really not super common when did we start going to two to three TVs in a home 80s to 90s yeah and so more places to watch than ever now more outlets to watch than ever with the internet and the companies have the ability to go man this whole nostalgia thing is powerful we can take we can take Star Trek and reboot it we can mm-hmm. take Disney films and reboot them. And all these people that saw it as a, saw them as a kid will pay to go again. Sure. And I don't know, you know, everyone likes to make every decision that Disney does kind of nefarious. I don't know that that's true. I think if it makes financial sense and they think they can also genuinely entertain people, I think that's all they're doing. I don't think everything. Well, yeah. I don't think everything is just this. Oh, I, and that's well, forget, for, forget the fans' cash grab. Yeah, you know? I think that's what, it, it. Annoys me when when people get annoyed by a business making a decision because it's going to profit. What do you expect them? They didn't buy the rights to Star Wars to not make any content. <laughs> right. You know, they yeah. paid four billion dollars. Yeah. They're gonna make stuff. They're only doing this because it's gonna make them more money. Uh-huh. Yes. It's called yes. business. They're a business. And by the way, they can still do it in a way that they care about it and want it to be yeah, good. Yeah, and, right. and what it, with, to, to what I said, I didn't mean that as like a like a, a piratey, sleazy cash grab. No. It makes sense. You didn't say that, but that's a very common sentiment, especially yeah, about yeah. a company as large as Disney. Sure. The new Star Wars stink, and they're just trying to capitalize on the... the no, they... Well, yes. The, the, the people that work... <laughs> yeah, you might think that. It's Shut fine. your mouth. <laughs> the people that work at... No, I'm talking about the, the capitalized part. Oh, not the, okay. Yeah, they're going to they capitalize on it, but the people that work at Lucasfilm, I'm sure, care deeply about making quality films because they care as much as the average fans. Of course. Maybe they don't deliver on it, but it's not because they didn't care. It's, it's, I think Disney can go, yeah, we'll make a billion dollars on Mulan in China. Also, let's make a movie people will enjoy because we're right. in the entertainment business. You know, so I don't, I, to me, I I think there's original content. I, I think it's there. I think it gets buried. Yeah, that's uh, a good point. Because uh, there's so many, I mean, literally when you watch TV, when the first TVs were coming out, people had one or two channels. And, yeah. and then it would go to static at a certain time of the night. There's literally, they've got to fill 24 hours a day across hundreds of channels. Mm-hmm. And, and streaming platforms and podcasts and YouTube channels and all these forms of media uh, or all these mediums now that you can use as, as forms of art. So I don't know. I just uh, and I and I think the 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 power of nostalgia, people complain about, well, I need to quit making superhero movies, then quit paying to see them and they'll quit making them. You you know, if you really don't like them, don't pay to go see them. If you don't like, like it. Yeah. If you don't like the live action Disney remakes like me, don't pay to see them. Exactly. Now I'm going to pay for Disney Plus, and I might stream them, you know, eventually. Uh, but if you don't really don't like the stuff, just don't pay for it. It's not a big deal. Vote with your wallet. Don't like it. Go pay to see all the independent films. Guess what? If there's a great independent film and it only makes sixty million dollars at the box office, they're probably not going to have a desire to make a whole lot more of those. Exactly. But Avengers Endgame just globally did two point eight billion dollars. People are paying to see big movies if you want more independent movies pay to go see independent movies uh you know i but i think it's there you know i think and stuff gets buried even original content on netflix and amazon prime and hulu and there's some really compelling content that i think's out there pocahontas <laughs> you just wanted to oh your favorite favorite disney, disney princess because yeah, i had a crush on her as a kid sure yeah. and that'll make my family feel better since we started by talking about my man crushes yeah. There you go. So liking a cartoon is way better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jessica Rabbit's probably in there for somebody somewhere, right? She, is she a Disney princess? I don't know. Did they? They probably own her now. Throwing it out. No. New answer. Who's yours? Did you say Jasmine from Aladdin? Why? Okay. Did you have it a was, crush on her? I don't know if crush would be the word, but uh, 
Aladdin was certainly my favorite movie as a yeah. kid growing up. And, uh, yeah. And if you think this is weird, let us know in the comments section. <laughs> or if you've got favorite Disney print. Dylan, answer. Let us know that. Too. Dylan's trying to not answer the question. I did you answer. You said Mulan. That's Mulan. What, oh, you did say Mulan. That's yeah, what carried this whole thing off. Yeah, Mulan. Yeah. Mulan. Let's talk about Mulan. Did you hear that there's a movie? <laughs> <laughs> Kendall's still sick from a week ago. <laughs> yeah. He's got some sort of bug. That emergency medical service call didn't do the trick, so <laughs> we're going to find him some kind of antibiotic. Let the science heal him. That was episode 11. Yeah. If if you're a listener and you're thinking to yourself, self? Which you are. Yeah. You're thinking to yourself, self, these guys are clearly running out of topics. Hey, guess how you can fix that, listener and friend of the show? Reach out to us. On one of our social media profiles at From the Mid Pod, or use the hashtag Thoughts from the Middle. Send us an email from the middle at protonmail.com and uh, let us know. Yeah, we do. Would... We're, we're not running out of topics. We're like, we, we literally have a list yeah. of things that we could talk about. Um, what we don't know is if they are things that you want us to hear, what yeah. that you want to hear us talk about. Yeah, we'll have fun talking about them. So if your ears are bleeding right now because we talked about football for too long or we talked about Corey's man crushes for too long, then, yeah. uh, I mean, tell, hey, maybe you want to hear about more of Corey's man crushes. If that's the case, I probably have a know. few more I could dig out. Yeah. Was... <laughs> I'm glad you clarified because I have plenty of bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Limitless. I can just make I could make a li I have lists of them. So I, I was just being self-defecating earlier. <laughs> it's not how I really feel. I know that we've got that's great why ideas. You left the loon room. I I yeah I the creative process episodes were so good I I actually am enjoying just this total I love those so much but they're I'm so they're I'm so heady also, they were fun I'm also enjoying the fact that we just spent however much time talking about Corey's hair and Disney princesses I that's honestly I hope that people like that because to me that's one of the funnest parts about doing this is yes. that we could have really deep thoughtful good dialogue and then just hard left yeah we literally said that in episode one yep and we, i've been we, telling you guys behind the scenes since we launched this i love when people say hey this episode was hilarious i didn't listen to this one because i don't like star wars but then i love the one after that yeah. like that's great you don't literally have to listen to every minute of us nah, yeah, you should sure. yeah. we're hilarious oh for sure <laughs> but you don't have to there's gonna be inside jokes yeah that you're gonna miss out on and then you're you're gonna you're gonna feel sad. But there's really only six inside jokes. And we want <laughs> we want you to be happy. Yeah. So, so you should listen to every second of this podcast. Yeah. Did I intro this one? Probably four times. Did I intro this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it out. So thank you so much for listening. Uh, I pr what am I not supposed to take it out? I'm getting a look. <laughs> what did I do? What? I have no idea what that look was. I don't know. Did I cut somebody off? No, nope. I'm bad. I think no. it was. I'm gonna take it out and then. That, that, that. <laughs> Keep going. Just <laughs> all right. Let's go. Thank you so much for listening. Do all the stuff that we ask you to do on our social media. And uh <laughs> we're, we're out. Corey just defecated himself. <laughs> Sorry, Ludacris.